What's going on, Foot Clan? We got a great show prepared today. Bounce back players, some fantasy football news, and a whole lot more. Before we get started, the month of July is here, which means you need to get into the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You got all the stuff you know and love, the player profiles, 100-plus videos, expert rankings, analysis, our top 200 list, the risk ratings, all the projections, everything you need, sleepers, breakouts, and busts. And for this year, we've brought to the table mm. an iOS and an Android app to boot. It's a bonus, and we're going to be adding some really cool features to the app as well. So check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, happy fourth. What's going on? Fireworks. Festivities. I was talking about this show. Oh, Ooh, I thought you were talking about my tum-tum. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jason's tum-tum has got a little bum-bum. <laughs> little Fireworks going on <laughs> in the belly region. <laughs> little TMI if you're to watching, start the show. If you're watching YouTube <laughs> and you notice a real hard edit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it'll be. That's me going to throw up. <laughs> uh, Jason... We, but uh, you got to power through, man. Oh, I will power, power through. through. I'm, here. I'm, I'm a man of the people. I'm here for you. Uh, welcome in. We It is July 4th, so um, happy 4th of July for everybody. We're recording this show the day before. We're not monsters. We're actually with our families on July 4th, so hopefully you guys out there are enjoying your family as well. Andy, there's some people that probably do have to work on the 4th, and you insinuated they're monsters. No, 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 no. We have the choice. If you don't have the choice... Okay. Now, if you have the choice and you decide I'm going to work on the 4th of July, right? I mean, you may be a little monster. What if your house is full of termites? Well, <laughs> sure. There are extenuating circumstances, What if Mike. you have deep American <laughs> credit problems you need to work and yes, pay off? That's a choice. You. Uh, that's fine. What's more American than that? What's more? Heavy look, debt. <laughs> Mike, of course, has to divide us to start the show. I'm just you trying to prevent. Th- I'm a man of the people, and you're calling them monsters. I look. If you're working, and not hello. the Pokemon kind. If you're working, thank you. Hello, thank welcome you. into the show. It's Thursday, July fourth. Subway driver. That's, thank you. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I figure the subway. I are was running. imagining the sandwich company <laughs> is delivering on the fourth of July. I was confused. We have a great fantasy football show for you today. Bounce back players. We each picked a few guys we think are going to bounce back from disappointing seasons. Got some big news to talk about. Ezekiel Elliott on the show. Uh, not the player, but the news. <laughs> yes. And uh, lots going on. We just got back from New York. Thank you to everybody who came out and, yes, and thank supported you so much. the live show. It that was, was fun. It was, was incredibly fun. Jason jumped off the stage. I did not blow out my ACL. I was able to succeed and plant. I mean, I was like a gymnast at the Olympics the way I planted that you, so you're, stage you're, jump. Your jumping now is 50%. That's correct. I am at a 50% rate as of right now. The Based on stage height. The yes. Chicago stage no, was no, I very mean, high. I mean, the last time you jumped off the stage, oh, you my, fell. Yes, that's true. When we came out, I noticed that the, the crowd was – there wasn't much of a, a pathway for him to jump. He had to clear it out or else danger, <laughs> danger – there could have been an incident, but Should've he, he made surfed. it off the stage, high five some people. We had a great show. It was a fun one. Yes. Um, so San Francisco, next Thursday, July 11th, BallersLive.com. Quick question of the day, guys. Who's a player that you wish could break free and claim independence from their mm. current team? So timely. Oh, I see. This is so timely. What player, what player do you want to uh, raid a ship? And dump all their tea into the harbor. You know, oh, okay. it's it's really funny when I when I was looking at this question, I was thinking about teams that don't throw the ball a lot, right? Right. Like I I want to get it to you know I want to get somebody to a better quarterback. That's kind of what I was thinking. It's like how can I find someone? Like what if you were, you know, uh, on the on the Seahawks, yeah, and, AJ Brown on the you know Corey Davis, and it, you know it's like and they they just want to run the ball, right? But I'm like, well, they are with Russell Wilson, who's pretty good. So that's not a, you know, that's not like liberating from Russell Wilson. I'm like, okay, the Lions want to run the ball. Go what do you- Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> but then I realized, wait a minute. 
it is actually Russell Wilson mm. who <laughs> should be liberated from his team because Russell Wilson should be 100% a top three fantasy quarterback year in, year out. If MVP he was, candidate every year. Absolutely. If he yeah. was given the reins to run a high-powered offense that's going to throw the ball a lot, I think he would succeed. So, he would run. He, I mean, Drop him in Cleveland, for example. If he was in Cleveland with Freddie Kitchens, drop, Odell Beckham, drop Jarvis him. Landry. I, I would, you know, sure, yeah, the, the, all the weapons. But I want a terrible defense. Drop him in Tampa Bay. Let him go nuts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you want Russell Wilson freed from the shackles yeah, because of I think, that offensive system that ran the ball over 100 million times last season? Yeah, I mean, for an statistically in, accurate. Like, yes. I'm not liberating him for his NFL life. That would be, I would apologize to him for being like, I've traded you to Tampa Bay, <laughs> go win a Super Bowl. Uh, but for fantasy football, man, would he be so much better somewhere that was more pass happy with a worse defense? All right, I'll go next. I, I find myself strangely sympathetic to this player. Mm. This, this one gets season. me in the feels. And it's Royce Freeman, running back for the Denver Broncos. He was on a radio call uh, yesterday, and they were talking about, well, what players are you excited about on the Broncos? You know, who, who do you – do you get excited for Lindsey or Sutton or Emmanuel Sanders or Royce Freeman or, God forbid, Joe Flacco? And the truth is – no, I don't, and that's the problem. Royce Freeman, he ran against eight in the box more than almost any running back in football last season. He's in a committee. He's on an offense that we're very uncertain of. He's on an offense for a team that is going to be a defensive-led team altogether. So not a, lot, not a lot of opportunity. He's still my pick if you look right. for value in the backfield to have some effective games, but Royce is not going to have the workhorse capability that I think he is – talented enough to yeah, sustain he could do it because he can catch the ball yes and, and yet last year he just ran a, against eight man fronts 36 percent of the time or whatever it was and it's not the best situation the, the the passing game I mean Flacco could Flacco could be all right I'm not going to discount it he could be all right but it's not it's certainly not an op open system that's going to give him running lanes I think Royce Freeman's a guy I'd like to see freed from uh, you know claim his independence sure. from the Broncos backfield all right the player who I would like to see liberated or clean, get that independence. I want Allen Robinson to escape the, the talents, the clutches of Mitchell Trubisky. I know there's still plenty of people out there who think that Mitchell, everything's going to turn out okay and he's going to be a good quarterback. I'm not particularly one of those people. Dare I say, I am not <laughs> one of those people. And you saw flashes of Allen Robinson I know, Andy, you, you gave him the business. Yeah, if you heard I, the last show, I just disparaged him greatly. Yeah, so it makes sense because you call him Blade Runner, and Blade Runner is actually great, and I think that Allen Robinson is actually still a great wide receiver. You saw flashes of it last year, dominant in the playoff game. He did have a couple performances as well in the regular season where you go, oh, yeah, Allen Robinson can still be that player if he's, if he's put in the right opportunity. It was really unfortunate for him that he had to go into free agency with his injury. I mean, See, I, I think if he had not torn the ACL that last year in Jacksonville, he would have had his his pick of – of he would have been the top free agent wide receiver that a lot of teams really wanted to acquire. If I push – if I wanted to push back a little bit about that, it, you know, most people would look at the Chicago offensive system and want a piece of that system. Sure. Want to be the number one guy in that system. I think it's possible that we – We've seen the best of Robinson in a one-year sample pre-injury years ago, and yeah, you get flashes. But that, that is the difference, right, in fantasy between a great wide receiver and an okay wide receiver. An okay wide receiver shows up some of the time. A great wide receiver shows up most of the time. Right. I worry that Robinson fits into the some-of-the-time category at this stage of his career. That's why I despair. Sure. You know, we, we, play, we had fun with the – you know, right. the hyperbolic nature of uh, the, the live show in New York about Allen Robinson. I just think that most people would envy being in a Chicago system. Yeah, yeah the, I, the problem I, is that Mitchell Trubisky just, he, we'll talk about flashes. Yeah, Trubisky does flash, but then he will go the complete opposite way where it doesn't matter. I mean, you're talking Larry Fitzgerald in the era of John Skelton. And, uh, and yeah, that's going to come up like, today. Oh, <laughs> but that's the point. It's like, that's a Hall of Fame wide receiver who 
later showed that he still had back-to-back thousand yards in him, and he sucked. So, so I put the blame more on on Mitchell not being fully capable yet. Follow up question for you then. Sure. I I would have considered Robinson as a candidate for one of us to pick for bounce back. When you look at his career consistency charts in the Ultimate Draft right. Kit, you're looking at you know, a number of years where he finished in a, in a reasonable position, and then all of a sudden, wow, he's he's in the red, right? He's outside right. of that top echelon. Do you believe that, you know, you want to free him from Chicago, but you're not going to get your wish? Breaking right. news, he's not going to be traded. Sure, okay. Do you believe he can be a bounce-back guy this year with Chicago? Is, is Sorry, dude, but is the that quarterback I've been talking about, he's still there? Mitchell Trubisky Did, is there. In the last 30 seconds, have they moved on? No, hold on, let me check. No. Then No. Uh, so you don't I, okay. I did consider him for this as a bounce back player. I'm not believing that the that the odds on favorite would be for him to bounce back to be a top fifteen type wide receiver, but could it happen? Absolutely. Mitch Trubisky could be better this he year. He could take another step. You also have to remember his shoulder injury last year that affected some of That's fair. some Very of what fair. was bad. So maybe that played into uh, Trey Burton and Allen Robinson disappointing. Okay. All right, fair enough. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We have a a huge giveaway right now. Oh, yes, we do. On the website, footclangiveaway.com. Free to enter. Head over there. There is a signed case Keenum. No, 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 Jason. No? No. We, uh, I oh, get, Joe Flack. No, 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 no. Patrick Mahomes. Wow. Mm, Patrick Mahomes signed jersey. From Pristine Auction, giving it away Where right now. Where is this located right now? Uh, we've got it in under lock and got key. Got a lockdown. Jay Grizz and Judge Giamatti are watching it very carefully, ready to send it out to the Foot Clan. FootClanGiveaway.com, free to enter and win. One of the ways that you enter is to go and support the show at the Podcast Awards. Yeah. So we're going, believe it or not, we are going for a four-piece. Oh, this is called the Quattro. Yeah, we didn't leave to play baseball like Jordan did. We're staying to try to get number four. Quattro. Yeah, no Birmingham Barons Look, the for foot, this show. The Foot Clan. Wait, who? Huh? That's the AAA team that Jordan played for. Uh, Stay with it. I, my, baseball. Uh, I knew he played for the White Sox. It's a deep cut. We're going for four. All yeah, right. Look, the Foot Clan, you are like the, undefeated, like the internet. You're undefeated. You've never lost. Go get them. Don't start now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so keep it up. No, but go to footclaimgiveaway.com. You'll see how you can support the show by nominating us for the People's Choice and Sports yep. Award again in 2019. There are some other ways that you can enter. All free, all fun. We'll give away the Pat Mahomes jersey at the end of the month. So head over there to footclaimgiveaway.com. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give Brooks a chance to break the first bit of news here. Uh, you wanted to make sure people knew what was going on with the show schedule, right, Brooks? Yes, sir. Mainly that you get an extra show this week, Saturday. Yes, three shows a week in July. We've been to a week. July, we say, look, uh, you can't contain us in two. That's then true. It's too it's too much. So let's give you an extra show a week in July. Go to five a week in August. Uh, Jason, are you are you excited about the extra show? How how's, I, I how's your stomach right look, now? Oh, it's it's a special it's a special place. Uh, <laughs> I feel look. I'm just gonna say how it's it a is. Spicy meatball. I feel great right now, <laughs> and I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, yeah, no, the Saturday show is going to be awesome. Three shows a week is better than two shows a week. So you can listen to that on the weekends. Come in on Monday with your spitballers. Tuesday, footballers. Oh. Thursday, footballers. Saturday, oh. footballers. Monday, spitballers. You get the idea. Yeah. All right. Big news. Ed Werder on Twitter. Also, I saw this confirmed on multiple outlets now. Following the meeting between Commissioner Roger Goodell and Ezekiel Elliott, the league office informed the Cowboys that Zeke will not be suspended he did not violate the personal conduct policy with the incident with the security guard that we saw on video. He will not be punished. He will be able and willing to support yes. your fantasy team from week one, which is not something we've had with Zeke every year of his career. And we worried again. I have been on several shows where they're like, oh, you know, you guys were just talking about this with me. Saquon, Zeke, right. McCaffrey, Kamara. The variable of Zeke's potential suspension was hanging over like the cloud that it was. It's gone. 
What's your reaction to the news? Uh, honestly, my initial reaction is it points me to a, a different lane of, okay, he met with Commissioner Goodell, and it's out immediately. He is not going to be suspended. Tyreek had a full day with Commissioner Goodell, and we still have no idea what's going on. So that that's just how my brain went there. But the news to Zeke, I mean, it's – yeah, take him at the first overall pick. He's great. He he was my number one running back in rankings. That where if I was on the clock yesterday, I would absolutely have been taking Saquon. I'm not gonna play with the idea that maybe Risk week one I don't even have. Yeah, week one or maybe week two I don't even have the number one pick overall when there's such a good option in Saquon there. So right now I think you know it's it's full go ahead for Zeke. He's in the the 101 conversation. No worries. He goes from a risky pick right now to one of the least risky picks out there. Okay, let's talk briefly about Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, he is, he thinks it's realistic to be ready for the opener coming off the Achilles injury. That's rough. He thinks man. he can have a Pro Bowl season. Last season, it started strong. It did. Yeah, Sanders was fantastic. If it, different quarterback, different head coach, different. It, if you forget Achilles. because of the injury and mm -hmm. you lost all that time for Sanders and he wasn't there when it was important, Manuel Sanders was dominating. He was he was posting a very solid fantasy fantasy numbers, but he's he, been, he's too unpredictable right now. Because if you go back another year, you know he put up five right. out of sixteen games inside that top twenty four range. Last season came out on fire. It just seems like you're banking on so many yeah, it's things to happen. It's ironic. Last year on this episode, the bounce back players, Emmanuel Sanders was one of my bounce back players. And he was. And he was. He was on fire. You was bounced great. him back too hard, Jay. I am you bouncing broke him his Achilles. back the other way for sure because, look. Four games maybe, inside the top 12 last year. Maybe he is ready. Maybe he is there, ready to go for week one. That's like hopeful. And if he is... Is he what he was as a human last year? Probably not. Right. He's got Joe Flacco. That's not great. Like There are so many reasons that it's not going to work out for him, and the only reason it would work out for him is just everything falls into some perfect place that's not going to happen. Uh, yesterday, I had the opportunity to talk to Devontae Harris, cornerback for the Cincinnati Bengals. He asked the question, look, outside of A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. So the big names in Cincinnati. Who's another name that you might believe in? Some news about Tyler Eifert trending in the right direction. Is Eifert next up on the list for you as a potential value with a Zach Taylor offense coming out of the McVay system? We've seen Eifert around the goal line. Or are you just done playing that game? They have Drew Sample, obviously, the second-round pick. So what I do mean, you think uh, about Eifert? If if you're just talking about tight end, uh, then sure, it's 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 there's so few good tight ends out there that you can take a shot with your last pick on Eifert and hope he's healthy. History says it's going to be a rough sledding. If you're just talking about the Bengals and who's the next person up there, I would take their best player, which is Rodney Anderson. <laughs> there was also news today. I don't want the injured Tyler Eifert. That's ridiculous. I'll take Rodney Anderson. <laughs> yes. News today about Gio Bernard being more involved this season, 9 to 11 touches a uh -oh. game. Uh, Joe Mixon and Gio potentially being on the field at the same time. I have, n I have no problem believing that Gio Bernard will be on the field. Do you guys buy that hype? Because I think, look, we've seen Gio be effective enough. It's not like Joe's going to be on the field 80% of the time. No, he won't. So does it matter to you, though, is this Mixon's backfield, does that concern you whatsoever? It doesn't concern me. Jason's I, I, just shaking his head. Not he wasn't even yeah, saying anything. No, I, it, it doesn't bother me. I think Mixon is a true workhorse back. I mean, it, you know, Malcolm Brown was on the field and used. Sure. Uh, and But he, he didn't really affect or have any, you know, uh, he did not hurt Gurley's value even when Malcolm Brown was, was getting work. Uh, and then one little bit of news because we can't oh. figure this one out. Now we're switching to the other guy. Yeah, this is – welcome to my camp. I don't even think this is hype, really. No, it's I mean, not hype. This Devontae is MBS Adams, hype. Uh, believes, this what? 
This is MVS hype. This is not Geronimo Allison hype. I want to hear you spin this then. Devontae Adams believes Geronimo Allison will be dangerous in the new offense. Yes. If you go and actually, you know, not just the headline of he's going to be dangerous. Oh, crap. Did you read the article? Yes. See, I, even though my advice is to read the article, I just, I, I saw the headline and said that's good enough. So the me. whole point that he's making is that he's going to be dangerous in this new offense because even though he's used to being an outside guy, they're moving him into the slot and he thinks he's going to do well in the slot. And that's that. So the point is everything that's been going on that in two wide receiver sets, it's MVS. The MVS is going to be used on the outside. They're using him all true deep. The, when I, when I read this, that, oh, hey, Geronimo is going to be great for the new offense in the slot. What I see is, oh, it was all true. Everything that's saying that, you know, and, and, and that's not to say that this isn't true, that Geronimo could have a great season, right? Like if I had to pick, I'm going MVS. Look, Randall Cobb has dominated in the slot. And maybe Geronimo Allison will be great in the slot. But what it does say is that MVS is on the outside. They're using him deep. Those are more his skill set. So I like it. I, this is an anti-MVS to me. My only note is I really don't care that Geronimo's not out there in two wide set. They're going to run three wide receivers. I don't think this is a binary situation. Agreed. I think it's going to be week to week. I think you're going to have good MVS games the way you did last year. I think you're going to have good uh, Geronimo Allison games. The only player that you can count on with 100% consistency is Devontae Adams. Yep. And the rest has to play out. Brand new head coach. So are both values right now? Probably. I mean, Jason, you've talked about taking both late in your draft. I have talked about Mike has talked both. about yeah. it. I, you know, I, I think it could work. I hate having too many eggs in the same basket, but it, that could. That, that basket's carried by Aaron Rodgers. Who we could have made, and, and I considered being a bounce back player on, on today's yeah, show because. That's great. While he wasn't bad last year, I mean, he's usually the number one, at worst, number two. The offense looks good. The wide receivers, the weapons, we're talking up Geronimo, we're talking up MVS, right. we're talking up Aaron Jones. All this has an effect on Aaron Rodgers. All right, that is it for news and notes. As a reminder, Sleeper doesn't just break the latest fantasy news. They are the best fantasy football platform. And you know what? We hear that from you as well on Twitter consistently. As simple or complex as you need them to be. Flexible, easy to use. Yes. Download the Sleeper app today. Let's get it going. Hello, everybody. I am back. I forgot. Every year, Mike. <laughs> that one sneaks up on me. It's a real treat. Now, I don't even know. Where does that? Do you remember the source? No. Okay. Just a movie. Uh, something. Who knows? Could whatever friend it's down funny. the street. Okay, bounce back players. How do you define them? A bounce back player is a player who has performed at one time or another, and you thought they were an excellent fantasy player. Then came last year and they disappointed you in one way or the other. Maybe they to injury, maybe to just their production evaporated, and now we believe that they will bounce back, and you should give them another chance. When you Run into situations like, let's say, Rob Gronkowski, right? Like, he's had several. Obviously, he's Will retired. not bounce back No, this he year. won't. But I want to use him as an example because at the tight end position or the quarterback position, a down year is easier for people to kind of forget about is my point. Like, right. Gronk has a down year. You need – there's only a handful of dominant players, so Gronk slides back in and drafts. I think it's less easy for fantasy owners to forgive players at wide receiver and running back because – there are other options. There's so many hype op opinions out there. So I think these are in, these end up being players at running back and wide receiver that end up being the best values in your draft because of the potential discount of a bad year. So in that event, I guess I'll kick it off with a team we've brought up a couple times today. A.J. Green is firmly in the bounce back category for me. Um, his situation, he's still one of the best wide receivers in football. Uh, and that was evident, you know, third best contested catch rate last year. When he was on the field, he was a dominant player. Problem was he wasn't always on the field. And there's question marks around Andy Dalton. There's question marks around the offense. But you do have an offensive mind coming into Cincinnati. You have a player in A.J. Green that is uh, on pure talent, one of the top what? Where would you put him? Top 10 well, yeah, in the NFL? Easily top, top 10. Top, from an athletic profile perspective? You know, last year saw 52% of the team's end zone targets, which was the second highest rate in the league. It was just availability. And so is A.J. Green, do I see a ceiling for him 
in this system, on this offense, after the struggles he's had staying healthy, of being a top five guy? I don't. I don't think that's the ceiling. But I don't know how you're going to get a more consistent player on a week-to-week basis when he's healthy than A.J. Green. Uh, he scored uh, exceptional once again on uh, Pro Football Focus. He's a top 12 guy he was on the wi- receiver He was ranking. the wide receiver nine in points per game through week eight. Bef- before the injury, you were getting the wide receiver nine. Number 11 average. fantasy finish last year, 40 because of the injury, and that's the discount that you get. So I don't see how A.J. Green doesn't bounce back in this offense unless he's injured again. That's that, the question. That's, that's the problem, but that's what you're buying. You're buying that risk for the reward of uh, top 10 talent in the NFL. Yeah, so I, look, I love the idea of the Bengals' offense bouncing back. I do. <laughs> like, I, 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 you know, Andy Dalton coming back and, and having a great year, I could see that happening. But one other risk that I think is worth at least noting is, like, their defense is not good. And if this team gets off to a very bad start from a wins and losses perspective, you could end up in a quarterback situation through the season where now it's like people are calling for the backup and wanting to move on from Dalton. And if something like that happens, that's another risk for AJ Green. That's it's, that, de- it's definitely is that a, a fair wrinkle. worry. No, I think it's a it's definitely a wrinkle in the in the argument that this is a guaranteed bounce back. I mean, you have. You have to believe that Zach Taylor is going to be given enough leash with this offense and quarterback situation. They weren't going to move on from Andy Dalton for the cap hit that that would have represented. Um, you know, the other thing that's been brought up a lot is the contract situation because AJ Green is not under contract next right. year. If he's not extended, you know, they could franchise tag him. It would be $18 million for next year. Um, his base salary this year is 12. He doesn't see himself going anywhere else, but you've brought that up in shows past. Okay, so I've got a question f- for for you guys. A, a fun little game here. Okay. All right. If you had to pick, you have to pick one of these two. Andy Dalton finishes as a top 10 quarterback, or Andy Dalton finishes outside of the top 27 quarterbacks. What are the highest odds? Which one would, wow. you, which one would you believe happens? Because I <laughs> would believe he would be top 10. If I, I mean, out of those, out I'm of just those two options, the two extreme options. Yeah, I don't think he's, I don't think he'll be a bottom five. I think, I think it's higher probability that he escapes the bottom five. That's unanimous so. for me. I mean, on paper, why the number twenty-seven, dude? The t- the tummy, the tummy is the <laughs> number twenty-seven. I should have gone top ten, bottom ten. The tummy's affecting sure. the mind for sure. But you're what you were just no about improvement, to say, no status so update. Just, you just we're, pulled the number twenty-seven, <laughs> dude, dude. I'm in a special place right now. This show's gonna be awesome. Look, but what you were about to say is true. On paper, he has a great receiving core with AJ Green. Uh, hopefully John Ross could be something, Tyler, uh, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, Gio Bernard. We're so fatigued yeah, of nobody. the Andy Dalton experience because he's had years inside that top 10. He's had an MVP caliber season where he spent the first 13 games performing for fantasy owners. Do we, you know? Maybe it's not like Kyler in Arizona with Kingsbury, but you do have a, a rejuvenation happening in Cincinnati. And weapons. You want to talk fatigue. Even Andy Dalton is fatigued of being Andy Dalton. He looks mm-hmm. in the mirror every morning and goes, ugh. Not again. Still S- Andy Dalton. S- still the red hair. So rude. Oh, I wasn't, so going, rude. I wasn't even going red so hair. Rude. I was going, I don't want to be Andy Dalton anymore. Uh, you mean who I was for Halloween. Yes. So, yes. Spot on. Actually, yes. I what? <laughs> I thought Andy Dalton was in on Halloween. Uh-oh. I thought no, you took the day off. Acting. Was, <laughs> acting. All right, Mike, kick it off with your uh, your bounce back player. Sure, yeah, I'll talk about this player until I'm blue in the face all off season. This is I mean, who knows he might end up being one of my guys, but Devonta Freeman. Do not forget. Do not be put off of what has happened last year. Was extremely disappointing because of the injury. But here's what's happening with Devonta Freeman. You're paying a third round price for an absolute touchdown machine uh, through 2015 and 2017. We have 43 healthy games, 29 rushing touchdowns in that time. He's on one of the highest powered offenses in the league. And he's Dan Quinn has been uh, he, he's been with Devonta Freeman the whole time. And over the past five years, here's where Dan Quinn 
his led team. Now I know he's not the offensive mind, but it's still his team. He's he's leading the ship. He's the captain. Here's where the Falcons have finished in offensive yards. Seventh, second, eighth, and sixth under Dan Quinn. That's a really good team. Matt Ryan is an absolute upper echelon quarterback. And in that time, Devonta Freeman, 1,011, 1,011. Uh, he was basically on pace for 1,000 years two years ago. A thousand, a thousand years. years. Thou- Incredible. What do they call it? An eon? <laughs> they say Father Time is undefeated. He not, laughs not at to his Devonta face. Freeman. Oh my I get goodness. a thousand years. And in those times, I mean, running back one, running back six, running back thirteen. It's it's the fantasy burns from last year combined with the end of two years ago. We're talking this is second degree burns from Devonta Freeman, which is causing him to drop to the third round. Somehow being drafted as the running back 17 on on fantasy football calculator. That is behind Leonard Fournette. Somehow the general public, they are more forgiving to Leonard Fournette than Devonta Freeman, who is a known pass-catching running back and on an excellent offense and not a Nick Foles-led that's, Jaguars. That's a that's very ridiculous. interesting comp, right? Because I think you've got a few more years of ups and downs with Devonta Freeman. Yeah. I, I, no, you won. Well, no, he's been injured for more. He's been yeah. injured during portions of sure. more than one and, season. And in that season, he was the running back 13. I think, look, I don't disagree with it. Last year, Atlanta was 30th in the NFL in rushing attempts, 27th in total yards, but their rushing offense was like 13th in yards per attempt. They could run the ball. They didn't run the ball. They didn't trust Tevin Coleman, and Devonta Freeman was hurt. I, I feel like you have to at least look Edo Smith's way beneath the surface too on look how do you give Devonta Freeman every ounce of this offense we well, don't you don't need to give him every ounce you just give him the workload that he has gotten before right which is you get him in the 230 carry range and, and the not to mention but let's say you gave him 230 okay that is 121 up for grabs just throwing it out there for fantasy owners that was last year's 27th ranked rushing attempts if you go more average middle of the road let's say you give Devonta Freeman 230. Right. Indianapolis was 17th in the league, 408 attempts. That's a lot of attempts on the table for another rusher in oh, Atlanta sure. as well. I'm not, I'm not going to make the case against Ito right now because I'm <laughs> busy making it for Freeman, and the targets will go up. Uh, uh, under Dirk Cutter, who is back as our offensive coordinator, the running backs averaged about 22% of the targets, unlike the past two years, which the running backs were seeing 18% and 14%. That's Freeman – makes his money because he can get in that 230 carry range and still catch 50 plus passes. I, I it's wild to me that the, the the players that are going around him. I don't I I don't fault people for being hesitant to draft him cuz he's he was hurt all of last year and the end of the year before. But I, you still you got to take your shot on on a running back in a great offense. I will grant you this if if he's healthy he is an extreme value. He's definitely good enough and on a good enough offense, proven enough, well-rounded in the sense that he's a pass-catching back. The question is, look, look, he's dealt with a lot of injuries. He's a smaller-bodied guy for the position, and you know the, the knee injuries and then the groin surgery, is he going the way of Doug Baldwin? That's the right. fear. And so I'm, I'm kind of out on Devonta Freeman, but you do get to a certain point where, well, if you're going to have the injury discussion of Freeman and Fournette, they're... Like, if they're both healthy, and I knew both were playing 16 games, I would take Freeman. Freeman. Yeah. And yeah. He's a great bounce-back candidate. Yeah, no, he, he do is. Do you believe he'll get the goal line work I do. over Ito? Yeah. Oh, yes. It, yes. Devonta they Freeman is, make a big de- They only scored 11 touchdowns on the ground last year. Which Mid- is, middle of the road would be 15-16. About the same size, but Freeman's a bigger – he's heavier. You say they only scored 11 touchdowns on the ground. Three of those were Matt Ryan, right. who is know. not known for that. They, Ito could not – punch those balls in on the ground and so I think Devonta Freeman who has always had a nose for the end zone if he's healthy he'll be used there uh, again I'm not super confident they have, confident uh, in his they have one other guy though right they have uh the yes. rookie Qu- Quadri, Quadri Allison yep. yeah yeah it's it's, it's who's, who's it's much Freeman. larger <laughs> so all right my first bounce back here is Hunter Henry tight end he's one of those guys that you know you he he missed the whole season and for some people, like Cooper Cup, who had an ACL and is coming back, and you're like, ah, I'm worried he's going to get off to a slow start. It's because the timeline is different. 
you know, Cooper Cup halfway through the season, some other guys, you've got late year injuries. It takes time to come back from injuries like that. But the timeline for Hunter Henry has been, you know, he missed the entirety of last year. He got hurt before the first game. And so the recovery timeline, not worried about it. Now you've got to remember what Hunter Henry did in his first. I was going to say, have we ever seen a bounce? Yes, 100%. From him? You consider that even though he's never played. I can you know, he played like 10 games, So I consider games. it from the standpoint of if you compare his first two seasons to anyone else, literally anyone else, his first two seasons over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns, and you compare – Scotty Pippen. Compare him to Scotty Pippen. He had more than 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns more than Scotty oh Pippen's entire career. But total, like, when you're reading that out, it sounds like you're saying he had – that in one year. Those was two years combined. Right, but I am comparing that to the two years combined of every other tight end. Okay. So, for instance, if you just take fantasy points, right, which at the end of the day, that's all that matters, and you look at the first two years for other tight ends in the last decade, the guys above him are Gronk, Kittle, Jimmy Graham, Hernandez, Evan Ingram, and shockingly Jermaine Gresham. I mean, and then it's Hunter Henry above a bunch of other guys. So, yeah, you, you feel like he didn't bounce because he was still in his first two years as a tight end. All but, the hype last year, too, I think, is yeah, what, the, what plays into that. So it's a post-hype sleeper because of the injury. And, and you've got a guy who, you know, the Chargers still have 110 vacated targets. You have lost Tyrell Williams. He's out of the way. And also you've lost, I know this is kind of silly, but it's not at all in the fact that you've lost one of the best tight ends in the history of the game who got 45 targets Scottie last Pippen. year, Scotty Pippen himself. <laughs> How many Scotty Pippen jokes can but we fit in a show? Antonio Gates isn't there. He had 45 targets last year. Let I, me ask you a question. Who has more receptions in your mind this year, Hunter Henry total receptions or Mike Williams total receptions? That's that's a fair question. And to Henry me, had 45 and 13 games last time we saw him on the field. Last year, Williams had 44. Both have opportunity to step into some target vacuums. Yes. Uh, I, I have right now Hunter Watch Henry. Your feet. Don't I have Hunter Henry vacuum. down with nine fewer uh, targets than Mike Williams. 89 to 80. Okay, so you're, you're calling for the bounce back. So then you are in on the sixth-round draft price. I think the sixth-round draft price, if you're someone that doesn't want to take the shot at the super late tight ends – and you want to have one of those middle tier tight ends, Hunter Henry to me has a better, like I would take Hunter Henry, you know, if, if you're comparing Hunter Henry to say uh, Eric Ebron and David the and draft Jeffrey. cost, then yeah, I think, I think that's better. Um, Ingram? Ingram, I would definitely have ahead of, Okay. of Hunter Henry, but but that's the type of pick it is. You're talking about a middle-tier guy well, that could have volume. And we're not even talking about the other positions. I, I mean, you're you're bypassing, you know, James White, Lamar Miller, Tyler Boyd. I'm just saying, uh, like, if you – if you're all, are you all in on Hunter Henry saying, yeah, I'm going to pay the draft price that it takes to get him? It might I, be a late fifth round. I am 100% not saying that Hunter Henry is a breakout, that he's okay. going to be unbelievable. You still have Mike Williams. You still have Keenan Allen. But he's going to be a top – you know, look, at tight end, to be a top eight tight end, it doesn't take much. He'll be there. He sure. will be there at the end of the year. And if he falls in a draft, I would I would totally be willing to draft him. Okay. All right, we need to move on. Next bounce back candidate I want to bring up. It's kind of on the heels of these arguments that have been made about Kyler Murray and the Cardinals offense. Uh, a lot of excitement, news, intrigue, mystery – all of those things kind of surrounding the Cardinals offense. I've heard so many national news outlets just curious about what this offense is going to look like. Mike, you've talked extensively about Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. the capability in this offense. I read some things about, look, Cliff Kingsbury wants to try to get to 90 plays a game. That's really an unheard of level. Wants to play in the, sh in the shotgun. More plays, more opportunity, but we have not talked a lot about Larry Fitzgerald. That's true. And so, what <laughs> I don't think I, anyone wants to talk about him. Well, I, and that's the thing, though. But if if you believe in the offense for Arizona, if you believe that it's going to take a step forward, we've seen enough of Larry Fitzgerald's career to see the ebb and flow of quarterback play and the effect that it has on his production. Last two years ago, Larry Fitzgerald was the number five fantasy quarterback. Running wide receiver. I'm sorry, wide receiver. <laughs> Couldn't even correct you. The, the the point being is last season with the just doldrums of Josh Rosen. 
It was very much like 2012 for him when he had John Skelton at quarterback, and it was a disaster for fantasy owners. Last year, his fantasy production dropped by 20% over the year prior. He's old. Nobody wants to draft him. They'd rather talk about Christian Kirk. If you look over the past three seasons, Fitz, Fitzgerald's in the top 12 as far as production from the slot, PFF grades, uh, routes run from the slot. He's still in that category. He's still very consistent. And do, when you say bounce back, you're not going to get prime Larry Fitzgerald in his career. But you are going to get the single best touchdown threat in the wide receiver core around the goal line, reliable week to week with the kind of offense Arizona is running. I think he's being overlooked for the sake of, hmm. I, and I think he's a consistency type of player this year in Arizona. He'll catch more passes than Christian Kirk will catch. And so then you say, hey, can he get to the 68 touchdown range? I think he can. So Larry Fitzgerald in Arizona to me is a product of a rising water level that we are projecting for Kyler Murray in the Cliff Kingsbury offense, David Johnson's return. I think you have to at least look his way, so I want to bring his name up now because I don't know if we'll bring it up again. <laughs> we may That's the not. honest truth. And the rest of this offseason, there's more exciting players to talk about. But this is – I just don't want people to forget the preceding three years with Carson Palmer, how effective Larry was from the slot, not in an athletic role. He's not expected to be Larry Fitzgerald of 2009. This is, they're not asking him to do something he can't do sure. at his age, at 35 years old. So if he did it at 30, you know, 34, can he do it at 35? I think he can in this offense. Sure. The, the problem for me for the, the weapons of Arizona, the, the, the wide receivers – I like Kyler Murray as a fantasy quarterback because he can throw, but more that he can run. And I I think he's going to end up running a good bit. Can he hit the mark? When Larry was dominating those those years ago, Carson Palmer's putting up 4,600 yards, 4,200 yards. Can Kyler Murray, as a rookie, come in and come – like, can he – let's say well, – I'll set an over-under for you, Andy. Kyler Murray throwing – 3,700 yards. Yeah, I mean, that's probably where I have him projected, right around there. 3,700, 3,800. Uh, to me, that? if Murray's right around there, which I, th I think he could, he could maybe go under, but it's it's going to be tough for Larry to what did Rosen throw? What me. did Rosen throw for last year? Oh, man. Because over the last 10 games. I just looked it up, 24 yards. 24 total yards. You're, you're close. 2,278. Okay. In a season where Josh Rosen led the team games. for the majority of the season, over the last 10 games, Larry Fitzgerald was a wide receiver three or better in eight of the 10 games with Josh Rosen in the passing numbers that you said. He also had five of those eight performances inside the top 24 and a top 10 finish with the worst of the worst. I'm saying he's being overlooked. That's fair. Bounce back means that you get a consistent wide receiver two type of player with not a lot of downside. You're not going to have – I mean, how many consecutive games does he have a, with a reception in Arizona? I think all of them. All of them that he's ever I had. I don't know. Man, I was, it's funny. I was just reading an article on how the Cardinals were just seconds from trading Larry Fitzgerald to the Eagles in 2008 when his rookie contract was up. Wow. wow. And it was an exchange that. for – it was like very public knowledge – the Eagles had offered their first and third round pick. That was where they ended up taking DJX. So it's conceivable that, you know, Larry almost went to Philadelphia back in 2008. Um, but that I, I think Fitzgerald's somebody that people sure. are forgetting about. And I think it's somebody that I don't even want to, like I want Kirk to take the next step and be the guy in Arizona as a Cardinal fan. So that makes him even easier to ignore. Right. I'm going to jump in here with a wide receiver who I believe is not done as well. And it, it if you look at where he's being drafted, oh please be Eric Decker. <laughs> he's no. coming back. No. Uh, if you look at where he's being drafted, it's it's just it's too low to me, and it's Alshon Jeffrey. If we're talking Philadelphia Eagles last year on a shortened season, sixty-five for eight forty-three and six. He started that season recovering from a shoulder problem, which, if you recall, he played the entire year with a shoulder problem, and he still came down with with nine touchdowns. And, and last year, if you give him the full season, he's on pace for over 1,007. Like, good wide receiver numbers. I don't, I'm not sure why people are, are ready to write Alshon off just yet. He was a wide receiver one or two over 46% of the time, which that's not elite, but that's still good. Like, that's a, that's a player who's in your starting roster 
every single week. The problem last year for Alshon was if he wasn't in that 46% as a one or a two, he busted. He busted over 53% of the time. And in the past few years, that just simply was not who Alshon was. He was a far more reliable guy, a far more consistent player. And he's, you're in on Carson Wentz. You're in on the Philadelphia Eagles and the passing attack. And I am as well. And Deshaun Jackson's a huge part of that. Deshaun Jackson plays a different, a completely different role. A different role. And he makes the whole team better. Mm-hmm. Like he adds passing yards. He adds he adds scoring opportunities. It's that's not that's not taking away from Alshon. To me, that only adds to what Alshon could possibly do. Last year, Carson Wentz, maybe he's recovering from the injury. He was only going deep about 11% of the time compared to 15% when it, it was his awesome year. Carson Wentz was slinging the ball. He was going down the field over 15% of the time. And to me, Alshon Jeffrey is being absolutely left for dead, and I think he is – It's so hard is, for he, me. I think he's a great value. And we do know that Carson and Jeffrey in particular have had this rapport around the red zone. And I look, you're right. I believe that Carson Wentz is going to be – a upper echelon in total yards quarterback this season, a top five fantasy guy. Right. Probably can't do it without Alshon. I just don't. Can't, to me, can't. I don't like seeing disappearing Alshon or for reception Alshon. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Like last year, it was that, that was anomalous to the rest of his career. And unless you're saying, okay, well, Alshon has lost a step, the injury recovery took things away from him that he will never no, get fair. back. I mean, he, you're talking it was more like a 30% bust rate for Alshon instead of being really disappointed, you, but still had huge games last year. Did you mention his average draft position right now? So right now in half point, he's going right, He's going at the back of the sixth, beginning of the seventh round. And it's trended down over the last month People are for fantasy owners. People have soured greatly on Alshon. In, fa- in fact, if you look back in April, okay, maybe this was pre djax Pre Foles transition, whatever. In April, that he was a late fifth round pick. He's now being drafted in the six, twelve, seven, yeah. one range. That's insane. Yeah, and still dropping. I mean, maybe and, not after this show. Well, just let him drop. Like scoop up that value. That's that's too cheap. He's that's too much of a value. Yeah, he's definitely that's a good illegal. Value. <laughs> and 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 the reality is, I think it would be very realistic. You you know, obviously, Andy, you've talked about this recently, but you could say Carson Wentz is the best bounce back possible and if he bounces back then Alshon you know rides rides the wave with him because very few guys have the ability in the team and the offense that are going that late to have double digit touchdowns would you rather have Alshon Jeffrey with uh let's let's call it 601 let's say draft day he goes 601 Alshon Jeffrey at the first pick of the sixth round or Larry Fitzgerald first pick of the ninth round Alshon, Alshon. okay I think it's probably the right call even though he's <laughs> I pushed Alshon up for that comparison yeah because he's going basically 701 now just telling you uh that he's a steal so yeah. uh all right my bounce back and and you could argue maybe this isn't a perfect bounce back because he he hasn't finished super high but obviously you've seen it on the field but I'm calling for a, a genuine full-scale bounce back into superstardom for Dalvin Cook I think Dalvin okay. Cook who obviously struggled with injuries so far in his shortened career, has been vultured uh, you know, on the goal line, but Latavi- Latavius Murray's not there. I know you're a big fan of Alexander Madison, but while we were at the FSGA talking with some industry people and some industry insiders, we heard that the word from out of Minnesota is that he is flat out the goal line back, that, that when they're on the goal line, it's Dalvin Cook's world. And when I went and I took a look at my rankings, took a look at everything that I believe about Dalvin, because when he's been on the field, he's dominated. He is a full pass catching back. He has never looked bad on the NFL field. Now you've got the Minnesota Vikings, great defense, great team overall that want to run the ball a little bit more, be more balanced. More than 27th in the league in rushing attempts? Exactly. Exactly. You go from being one of the lowest rushing attempt teams to let's just say nine middle, touchdowns on the ground, middle of the pack, and then you make Dalvin Cook your actual goal line workhorse because maybe Alexander Madison, maybe you like him, but but it's possible he's just a rookie backup 
to their star, Dalvin Cook. I think yes. that's more likely. So Dalvin Cook comes out, and if you look at what he did the second half of last year, he's on pace for 1,100 yards uh, just on the ground, 480 through the air. So you're talking about a 1,500-plus yard guy. Don't even look at the back half. Look at the whole season, including the games where he exited due to injury and really upset my personal fantasy <laughs> team. I think Dalvin Cook has an exceptional year this year. I've got him right now ahead of Todd Gurley in my rankings. What? Yeah, because – Which I, is so great because you have, Gurley, you have Gurley on our dynasty team and I have Dalvin Cook. Want to do a trade? So that's Ooh, super comfortable. Swapskies. No, I'm, I'm good where I'm at. Here's the thing. Oh, what hold, a, hold on, what a world we live in. So, so oh, it, my goodness. In, 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 in a dynasty, I just oh, want to verify this. I, I think we're out of time. In a dynasty, <laughs> if I were to offer you Todd Gurley for Dalvin Cook, <laughs> oh. what would you do? It's impossible for me to answer at this moment in time. It really is. because It's I, not. It's be, very easy. No, because my ego wants to say I'm going to shut you down right here right now on the show and it's just my guy's better i don't know it, it would be a tough call it really yeah. would it, it would i would probably man that's rough i'd yeah. probably say no but not because i i think you probably should go girly over dalvin cook in a dynasty but i'd probably say no because i don't know if my team can win this year and i don't want two years away girly i'd rather have two years away cook i believe but it's close um Okay. Maybe I just don't want to think about Gurley's knee all year. Maybe that's maybe that's part of fantasy football is I get to decide what I want to think about, and I don't want to think about Todd Gurley's knee this year. All right, we've got time for a couple questions. Let's hit the mailbag. 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 Oh. All right, you got a question for the show? Well, you know where to go. Too bad. No, actually, you can go to the website. Click the submit a question button. Or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's grab a voicemail question. Hey, Ballers. This is uh, Brad from Raleigh, North Carolina. I had a question about quarterbacks. I'm in a 14-team league, and I hear a lot about streaming quarterbacks, but it's nearly impossible to do in a 14-team league. A lot of people pick up two quarterbacks. So what is your draft strategy in a league such as that? Thanks. Love the show. It's a great question, and I, you're probably right that s streaming isn't as easy, but value quarterback drafting is still exactly. what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. If, if you know that everybody's going to grab two, and so the top 28 quarterbacks are grabbed, then you need to make sure you've got two guys, and the streaming isn't off the waiver wire. It's really just the start-sit decision between your two guys. If you you're grab, flexing two players. Right, like if you were to grab Jameis Winston and – you know, Jared Goff if he slips, or if you go super late and you go Kirk Cousins or whatever. You got to be happy with Cam Newton in the ninth, Phillip Rivers in the tenth, or Phillip Rivers in the tenth and Lamar Jackson in the twelfth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that and sounds then, pretty good. Yeah, and, uh, guys like Josh Allen who are late in drafts and could be great, you still want to basically play the matchup game and not just lock yourself into one quarterback. If you can't do that on the waivers, then I would take two really late quarterbacks. All right, question from, uh, let's see, we'll go with Larry in Michigan. Writes in, he says, when is it too early for a fantasy football draft? When is it too late? And when is the perfect time? This is a Goldilocks draft question. Sure. So if you're doing best ball, have at it, man. Uh, get going right now. But it, I'm sure you're talking about having your redraft. It, too late would just be after week one has already started. But even then, if you have to do it, yeah, is it really too late? I don't know that there's ever really too I've seen late leagues well, that no, do I mean, that. It's too late if the NFL season started. Yes, I'm going to qualify that as too late. I think there's there's different things you could do with the rules, though. Like but, I, I but think there's a way to work it out. He's he's asking for the gamut of the calendar. We're not going to suggest to you that you draft no, after the no. season starts. If, like, if you want to know where Goldilocks drafts after trying. Brooks is shaking his head. <laughs> this is her third season in fantasy football. Goldilocks? The, yeah, the first year she did it right after the NFL draft. She said this <laughs> She said this draft is too early. Yes. Then the next one, she did it right before kickoff for the game, and she said this draft is too late. But this season, Goldilocks is going to draft after week three of preseason football so after the third preseason yeah. weekend is over she's gonna have the perfect fantasy football draft and yeah look, i mean it's too too early to me is before preseason starts and yes. you risk the injuries of training camp that's it that's why preseason three is where you go i mean you have the Week best look. nine look maybe you want to do a second half 
Maybe you want to do a second half fantasy football. This is an idealistic question here. This is not like, and could I'm, you possibly ever Larry. do a league in week 10? The reason you do it after the preseason week three is that's when the the teams have their dress rehearsal. You get the best uh, look at what the teams are, are possibly going to do. And the big injuries, which unfortunately come every year, they are a, they're mostly they're done mostly because done because week, week four in preseason the starters starters don't play right all right this question comes in from Josh in Portland it's a good one it says hey ballers was close to bringing home two hashtag Foot Clan titles last year finished runners runner up in both oh, rough uh, but a huge improvement from not making the playoffs in years past and then says thanks UDK speaking of the UDK you guys have Boyd Tyler Boyd ranked ahead of Calvin Ridley why. Ridley's reception perception number seems to be or profile seems to be stronger. Sure. Both play second fiddle and Ridley ha Ridley has the better quarterback thrown to him. Why are you higher on Boyd? Thank you. Well, I look the thing that jumps out to me is Ridley plays second fiddle with someone. Like they're both holding the fiddle together and his name's <laughs> Mohammed Sanu. And, and I it's don't more know awkward. When, when you try and play a fiddle solo with two people, like I, I will fret the strings. No. And, and Andy's in control of the bow. Nope. Look, it's it's not going to be great. No. What well, you may have a, a good week on the frets, and I may have yeah. one good week strumming, but yeah. it's not. That's the major problem. Is it's very a lot of screeching. It's carved out for Tyler Boyd. Is that fair? Yeah, that is fair. And, and uh, you know the sim similar consistent. thing to Muhammad Sanu. You got Muhammad Sanu compared to John Ross, but you've also got Austin Hooper compared to Tyler Eifert for a few games. So, yeah, Tyler Boyd has already established himself as a volume play, and that's really what it is. It's more like I expect more volume to go the way of Tyler Boyd than Calvin Ridley. Both are good options. There's probably a team where you would prefer Calvin Ridley to Tyler Boyd, like a sure. team makeup. But yeah. in, in majority-wise, Boyd was incredibly consistent. Yes. That was the thing that was so impressive consistent. about him last year. He was actually slightly better when A.J. Green was actually on the field, so this wasn't a he became wide receiver one and padded his numbers. It's it's not improbable at all that Calvin Ridley outproduces Tyler Boyd. We just happen to prefer Boyd. Pristine deal of the day. As always, we close out the Fantasy Footballers podcast with the pristine deal of the day. Yesterday on pristineauction.com, someone snagged a signed Marlon Mack Colts jersey for $47.76. Ooh. Congratulations. Oh, my goodness. That's a good deal. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS, and you get $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. All JSA witnessed autographs, so you know you're dealing with the best in the business. Guys, any parting words yes. before I shut this thing down? Jason, you made it I through. made it through. And he's looked terrible the whole time. I have felt... As I have looked. Thank you. Could you throw for down listening. some porridge right now? <laughs> oh, 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 I Maybe can throw, throw it up. up some we'll, porridge. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.